My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Absolutely. I'm Stacey Rasky. I'm an Iraq War veteran, best-selling author, uh, biker chick. I ride my motorcycle all over the country, and most importantly, soulful success coach for high-performing women entrepreneurs. I'm actually coming to you live right now from Tampa, Florida. Awesome. Well, first of all, thank you for your service. And and the other thing I was going to add is I saw one of your posts and you had no problem sharing your age. And I was like, I had to stop for a second. I'm like, well, is this? So you're very comfortable sharing things. I love it. That's fantastic. That's Absolutely. Very, very much. So it was sharing, cool. sharing my there. story was absolutely key to my success. Really, you know, leading by example. And the more I, I not only own my story, but share that, and, and the powerful lessons that come, it's amazing how that opens space for other people to do the same. I mean, it was a lot of what I put in my book. Um, and yeah, a lot of what I talk about, I have no problem, all about authenticity. And, and that's about, you know, my personal brand as well is lead by example. So That is awesome. So let's, so did you just wake up one day and say, I want to go to military? Is that what happened? Because I tell you what, when I, when I was in high school and they gave me that offer, Literally, my mom said, I'm going to chop you up. My dad said, I'm going to kill you myself before you, like, you even mentioned military. I, we're going to do things to you. And it, it was just like one conversation, and I was scared shit. I was like, I am not doing this. Because my dad was in the Air Force back home, center intelligence. He did all that stuff. So my mom was having none of it. She said, I send you to America to go get education, not to go to military. So you better take your butt and go do your math homework. And that was the end of the conversation for me. So I don't know how it was for you. Uh, you know, it's funny. I, I actually come from a strong military family. That wasn't necessarily why I did it. Um, you know, I, I really was at a strange place when I was 22. I needed a big change. I'd actually been on my own since I was 16. I was homeless and pretty much left on my own at 16. And tried the college thing it just wasn't the fit the first time I went around took a few years off and, and I just it was time to do something drastic in jump-starting my life and in really being myself you know really going through that journey of, of learning who I am separate from childhood trauma separate from scarcity adversity um, you know, because obviously those stories permeate and what was really interesting going into entrepreneurship was discovering how starting a business was like starting all over again in very, in the trauma recovery journey, because it's this constant slew of trigger after trigger. Cause all we're doing is pushing outside the comfort zone everything that we're doing, you know, sales, marketing, you know, getting clear on who we're serving, how we're serving, all of those things, you've got to get really clear with yourself and share that with the world. And that's scary as hell. And so it's very triggering. But yeah, the military was just a big reset. And it was amazing. And it was that first step in really understanding success mindset. So, so it, it is, did military help you because they give you that structure? Well, what was it about military that you think it helps people to be successful in business? I know the discipline part is there because my dad still got it. I somehow got it, which I'm trying to like, you know, move out of it. So I'm trying to be undisciplined a little bit, do free stuff, just do crazy things, but it still comes back, you know? So what was it about military that it does? Because I got to tell you, I've seen a couple of coaches that got military background and they kill it. I mean, these guys are on it. I mean, the way they talk, the way they carry themselves, the way they do things, you're like, dude, I want to be just like that guy. He's cool. But sometimes they scare the shit out of you. But most, more of the time, you're like, he's cool. I like that. That's cool. It is the, the most amazing thing about the military experience is it helps to teach you that nothing is impossible when the mindset is right. 
Absolutely. That was the most powerful lesson that I learned in, in terms of this success mindset. And I'll say there were quite a few years after I got out, I deviated. I forgot. I lost that part of myself going kind of down the trauma and addiction rabbit hole of building a life of shoulds. And, and I, I forgot about it. And this sort of rediscovering myself over the last five years and then also building a business in the process was reconnecting to that. And that really right out of the gates is the first lesson you learn that as they're pushing you through all of these crazy experiences, even in basic training is nothing stops you. But what you tell yourself, it's a hundred percent mindset. Your body will do whatever you tell it to do. Obviously training helps, right? And it's the same thing with business. Persistence, consistency, you know, tenacity, having a vision, having a plan, all of those things, but none of that will come into fruition if you don't believe it's possible, if you don't think you can do it. And honestly, if you don't know, you can do it without a doubt. So here's my question, because I've never done the military experience. I've watched a lot of documentary on it, but I'm, I'm going to ask you this question. When, when you sign up for military, different branches, my question is, do you get a mentor? Do you get a coach? How does that process work? Like, how do you learn things? Do you always learn in group setting? Like, how does that process work? Yeah, absolutely. You always have someone that you're you're learning from. There's always that that hierarchy. And so I think that's why it's so reflective of, of business and entrepreneurship, because right when you get into business, the smartest thing you can ever do is invest in support, whether it's a coach or a mentor, someone to help make the process and teach you, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. And so it's kind of that same thing. You get in and obviously you start in basic training. You've got your drill sergeants. And then over time, there's a hierarchy that builds based on, you know, some people are inherently good leaders. And so you'll have squad leaders and platoon leaders and you'll have um, people that are definitely either appointed to you or you find along the way that become your support system because it's all about community. We're not meant to do these things on our, on our own, even as a solopreneur, you know, that we need support. You need peers, you need mentors, and basically your leadership are your coaches and they teach you how to do these things. I mean, even, I mean, I could be wrong. I don't know about, but even, even snipers, when they go, they go with two, three, or usually they got a four-man crew. Like, they don't even go, but, yeah, maybe one person is pulling the trigger, but there is support even in that. So, to me, it's like, if you can do it alone, but why not do it in a group environment? Obviously, they have to be aligned for the same common goal. Like, you know, th there's a lot of chemistry has got to be there. The commodity's got to be there. So, a lot of things need to line up the right way. But I feel like you should do it as a group. Absolutely. Yeah. We're not meant to do these things on our own. No. And, and that is the one of those additional powerful lessons from serving in the military that it really is about having a team. So let's talk about let's talk about. Um, I know being authentic is a new movement that's happening. I've been hearing I've been yeah. hearing like, I don't know. I don't. It just happened one day that I'm hearing it. I'm like, we were doing that before nobody was calling it out that this was authentic or inauthentic. I'm not like, you were just who you were. W weren't you doing that? Like, now we have to say be authentic. Like, how much BS were you running that all of a sudden you have to say you have to be out? So that was a very confusing time for me. I was going through a little bit of a IQ issue. I was like, what does this mean being authentic? I, I thought you were authentic. So, so what does it mean to be authentic alpha leader? Or because there's a lot of big words that we're throwing up. One word is authentic. Let's let's define what that means to you as a coach. What does that mean? No, I completely agree with you. Authenticity is another one of those like buzzwords that gets thrown around in the uh, business and personal development and business development world. And honestly, so many people now have tainted it to where it really is kind of a bullshit word in many ways, because people are still curating and in and wearing a bit of a mask. And it's not actually what it really means to be authentic, which I will go with just real, real and raw, unfiltered, um, and completely a reflection of the truth of who you are. No bullshit. 
you know, and that's, and that's definitely how I roll, you know, nice. like sharing my age, <laughs> but, but absolutely. Yeah. The authentic, it's like, it's the great buzzword, but it's just about being real, real raw, true to yourself and being willing to share that genuinely with others. Now, okay. So here's, there's a lot of discrepancy in there, especially for FEMA. A lot of times when they say authentic, that means like no makeup, don't do your hair, don't do anything, just show up right out of the shower and do a live session and picture. That is not what authentic is, right? Because to me, I take it more, it's a respect that I give to the other person that I do interviews with that I need to be dressed up. I need to have my background set. Like, I'm not going to come out of shower and I'm going to do a live session like, that to me is not authentic. So I feel like a lot of people, especially for females, they're like, oh, be authentic, real, show them. I'm like, that's not being authentic. Authentic is was in your action, not in your makeup. So explain how does that work? No, you're, you are absolutely spot on. That's why, and that's why I say authentic has kind of been tainted because people are still making it an external expression where true authenticity, like I said, is a reflection of the truth of who you are, really genuinely being you. Of course, respecting the situation, having things being in context, still being a professional, but you, the person who you are being, is a real reflection of you. Who you are, the soul of who you are, is what you are sharing. Okay, so we got the word authentic out of it, but I'm not done with that conversation, just to let you know. I'm just going to move on because we, because I, I could go on about that all the time, you know? It's, it's one of those things. Listen, when I put a picture of my daughter in the pool and I put caption, one swimmer and four body, life bodyguard outside, like my mother-in-law, father-in-law, my wife, and I are watching one little tiny, tiny, jizzy busy girl in the pool like that's real i like i just called it the way it is i'm like this little girl has got four full grown adults just on her fingertip i'm like this is like dictatorship this is like literally hard. this is definition of dictatorship where we're standing outside she's got the whole pool to herself i'm like okay this is real to me i'm talking about a real situation right so that to me is authentic but then other people have different definition of what authentic is, right? No, so that is exactly about, it. That's spot on. I love you know, it. I'm like, okay, so this is a picture of what's happening right now. There was no filter yeah. on it. Being I real. Didn't it. I didn't subtract it. I didn't make the pool bigger. Like, I didn't do any. It was just the photo, mm -hmm. you know? That's what it was. Yeah. So let's talk about being alpha. What, mm -hmm. is that, what, what does that mean? What can you tell us about that? And is that just... I feel like that's like a macho kind of thing, but I'll let you describe. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's exactly it. So this is another one of those words where we have a lot of association with what it means to be alpha, whether it's referring to a man or a woman, it's pretty negative. You know, we think about the alpha woman is the type A, the control freak. She's intimidating. She might be, you know, in corporate, sometimes they might call her the ball buster, you know, the, <laughs> those things. And then flip side, it, the, the, the male alpha is kind of that same thing, right? It's the type A, the control freak, um, but yet can also be thought of as very egotistical or arrogant, you know, I mean, really even the woman as well. But regardless, alpha, we tend to think of as more of a negative connotation, but in the same respect, you know, they're a leader, you know, they're a leader, whether it's a, a positive or a negative, you know, they're a leader. Now, the flip side to that, or the, the next level of that is taking that natural leadership tendency of a strong personality like, like the type A, you know, the driven, ambitious, focused person, a high performing person, they're inherently a natural leader, and bringing in another level of internal alignment, clarity, connection to self, like they really know who they are, which means they can channel that alpha energy with even greater authenticity to lead by influence 
instead of intimidation. It's a subtle internal shift and yet massively powerful in creating greater impact and income in your business because every business, and again, this has nothing to do with whether you're introverted, extroverted, that stuff doesn't matter. It's just about channeling your inner leadership qualities in a really authentic way to be what your business needs and to really live out and share the message, the mission, the impact you're called to, to make in the world. I mean, to me it's like, I mean, I guess, so, okay, I, I, I don't know the root of the word alpha. I'm, I'm gonna need to go look it up and I'm gonna find out where that comes from. But I feel like in military, let's say we're at war or something's happening, or you could say, a police officer, a, a fireman, uh, someone, a, a principal, someone in charge of other people's livelihood that needs to jump in and save the day and they're willing to sacrifice themselves to save others or for the betterment of the tribe, the group, the people, the society, their town, whatever the case might be. So I feel like that has a lot to do with it. But when you put it together, authentic alpha leader, to me, it doesn't have any negative to it. I think yeah. all of those words together is positive because they're coming. You got to be authentic, and then you're showing your leadership skill. And, I mean, not everybody's going to agree with you, but that's okay, though. I don't see a problem with that. Huh? I'm not for everyone. The explanation's not for everyone. But for those who it's a re it resonates with on the deepest level, they get it, and those are my people. Yeah, because to me, it's like... If, if they don't understand, they don't understand. Okay, cool. So how do we use this? How do we use our inner self in our business as an asset? Because I know we all have tendencies, and I know some of them are, are more polite, more nice, more this, some we got more alpha. How do we channel, regardless of what we got, how do we channel those? What are some of the techniques in doing so? The most important thing to do is build a strong connection with yourself. This relationship and understanding with who I am, what I'm about, you know, so we are working from a place of integrity and really following what lights us up. You know, when, I, and I put it in the context of back when I was a high achiever, everything was very externally focused. So it was easy for me to be intimidating and kind of turn people off because I was like, nope, I'll just do it myself. That way it gets done right. Um, no, you know, just being very focused on the hustle and the drive and the goal, all about the goal. And, and again, the, the external achievement. The challenge to that, though, is if you don't get the goal, right, that can be very devastating to the mindset, to the momentum, you know. And so that external input, if it's not there, it can really throw us into a tailspin of self-sabotage and self-destructive behavior or just not uh, continuing that forward momentum versus... If we flip that over towards the high performance, which is more of that alpha energy, it's all about who am I being? Am I showing up as my best to where I can delegate? I can influence and inspire others as opposed to intimidate or scare them into doing what I need them to do. You know, I'm showing up again in that abundance energy that I'm showing up to serve instead of sell, you know, because people can feel when they're being sold to. And if you're in that scarcity place, like I need that sale. Mm -mm, no, I'm showing up in being of service. I'm listening, not just talking. I'm leading, not just telling people what to do. I agree with that 100%. I mean, I think the ultimate goal of a salesperson should be to do selling without selling. 
-hmm. Because then now you're going from serving, just like you just said, and educating. Because if they need your services, it just makes... Listen, there are certain products that I buy that I, I've never even seen a commercial for it. I just go buy it because I need it because it does what it's supposed to do. So exactly. to me, it's like, why can't more products be like that? Like, for example, I always use the example of Toyota Prius. Or now you could use Tesla or anything. Like, you know, you put one gallon of gas, it's going to go 40, 50 miles. Like, it does what it's supposed to do. Why would, you do need an explanation of what it does, but you don't need to sell it. Like, you never see, I have yet to see a Ferrari or Lamborghini commercial. Like, I totally want to see that when I'm watching <laughs> CNN. Like, somebody needs to call Ferrari. Just tell them, Vahid said, get your asses and do a commercial, man. I want to see a commercial do with CNN. Where CNN was going very hard after Trump the other day. And I'm like, can we get a commercial of a Lamborghini and a Ferrari in between this thing to just spice things up? But they never do commercials doing that. Because the people that do want that, they don't need a commercial. So they don't need to be sold on what the car does. So to me, it's like, how do we get there? That's a good question. Well, and, and what that is, is they got to know themselves. And, and that's what I mean in this sort of authentic alpha leader space is that process of getting to know yourself means you're able to get to know your client. The more intimately you know, hey, the stuff you like, the stuff you need to work on, what lights me up, you know, having really good boundaries, having these consistent routines for self-management, self-mastery, self-care are all helping you know what's my offer and is this a reflection of what really lights me up? Who is my ideal client, my soul client, my dream client that I love to work with? Right? Because again, that comes from that deep inner work, truly. And the more clarity you get, then you're showing up in that place of service. You know who they are because you know what you're about. You know what your brand is about. You know what your message is. And you know who the hell you're talking to. And so, guess what? Lamborghini, <laughs> Lamborghini exactly. and Ferrari know who they're talking to, and they know what they're about. So, no, they don't need to do marketing, right? No, they totally. have that clarity. Although it's not easy to figure that out because even, even though I'm very clear on what I want to do and what I want to accomplish, I still struggle with that. And I know that a lot of people do. And I've come to peace with it that it's okay to struggle with it sometimes. I don't have to have it all together because I don't think anybody else, I'm just a human being just like everybody else. So I have doubts, I have this, I have that. I have that. So to me, it's like, it's okay to be a little bit confused. There's nothing wrong with it. And then as long as I'm getting results for other people, let me just keep doing it. And I just, touch up on that, sharpen up my tools. And I think more entrepreneurs, I think we go really hard on, 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 on ourselves. And I think that's what we need to do, where we need to like give ourselves that credit that, hey, you know, it's okay. We could, we could do, we could improve on at every level, but just don't go too hard on yourself. Well, and that's exactly it. And that's the wise being of a wise mind. You understand both the, uh, logical intelligence and the emotional intelligence and it's coming together and you understand like no this is a journey that's high performance that's being the alpha leader it's about enjoying the journey recognizing that it's really not a destination that's always going to be evolving your brand your message who you serve what lights you up as you as an individual grow and change and evolve and get to know yourself better who you serve today might not be who it was a year ago or six months ago or pre-COVID, and it might not be the same in six months from now or a year from now, and that's okay. You know, it's celebrating the small successes along the way, like, oh my gosh, I like myself today. I like, I love that I'm showing up in integrity. I love that I have an opportunity to share these things and celebrate, guess what? It's not always perfect. And there are challenges and like real life, you know, again, the authenticity piece. No, I'm not going to pretend it's roses all the time. Guess what? Shit happens. Sabotage happens. Real life is there's speed bumps and roadblocks and stories we tell ourselves. 
I feel like shit happens a lot of times too often in my block in my office. I feel like shit just happens constantly. Sometimes I feel like that, you know. Here here's the other question I was thinking about it the other day. It was like a smooth day. For a second I was questioning I'm like nothing went wrong today. Something is wrong with that. I was like listen, we're about to have a bad day tomorrow like be prepared. Nothing happened today, so it's accumulating tomorrow. We just got to put out a lot of fire so And so if it doesn't I mean I think that's the spice of it. I think that's the fun part. I mean if if things didn't break down, I mean there won't be any fun. Like I I don't know, it would be very boring. I don't know, that's just me. I agree with you. No, it would be super boring and that's where all the lessons come from. We would not have success or be where we're at if we didn't have challenges. I would not be the person I am today sharing what I share, talking about what I talk about, you know, having written a book and doing all the things that I do had I not experienced trauma, homelessness, abuse, hardship, you know, all of those things had to happen. That's the 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 beautiful fabric that has created the tapestry that I bring to the table today. I agree with that. So listen, my last question for you and I know we went over it. Um you had a post I think it was it was handwritten I don't know if you took a picture of your 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 journal you said I make patterns turn into habits Mhm What does that mean That and I love that you were stalking my profile that's so good of you to research your <laughs> research your interview Listen interviewing. if there's a if there's a coach over there I'm literally interviewing you for our mastermind group without you even knowing but oh, I, I, I like it. to know This is if I, if I'm if I'm doing an interview with you I need to know who you are and what you stand for and everything else because I feel like as an entrepreneur as a female as someone who's got that type of background you are in position to inspire thousands if not hundreds of thousands and if you need the other support other people to come in together to help you with that then that's what needs to happen so that's why that's what's going on use my voice and my visibility and share the message the way that I do and really speak on embodying the power and the confidence that we need to bring to the table as a leader for our business because that's what a business needs if you have a business again regardless of personality it's not about having to be outgoing or having to be any particular way it's just about embodying the leadership the power and the confidence that you need to reach your goals and make that impact. Love it. Listen, how do people find you? Oh, absolutely. Oh, I still need to answer your question though about the patterns and habits, but <laughs> Oh, okay, go ahead. I I I, I, I I'm all ears. And the reason oh, okay. why I asked is because because I I thought about that and I was like, okay, if there are I think motivation and inspiration gets you going but i think something happens in between where you decide that this is the way i want to go and then you make it into a pattern and i feel like a lot of people don't give themselves enough time to go through this cycle where it was a decision i did this for a month i liked it let me make it into a habit to for myself i feel like a lot of people throw the towel in at the early stages before it becomes a habit so when you said you turn the patterns into habit my question was how many days oh i wish it could be that simple <laughs> you know to give a, to give like an exact number of days honestly i'm i'm still every day is about consistency in holding to my vision and saying okay what am i doing to support that Sometimes the what I'm doing in my routine this week is different from last week and it's always a work in progress. So, you know, I could say honestly from the moment you make the decision like the genuine commitment to be all in you're golden and then following through and doing it and then just realizing that I don't think it ever stops. I mean, it's always the process of saying, okay, what are the patterns that I want to keep uh in my life and in my business that are helping me get closer to what I desire. So, yeah. No, <laughs> no. I mean, the clarity for me came in 
when I got close to a lot of successful people and I saw that I started picking up the patterns that they're like, okay, they do these things different than the way I do or more important than anything else. I realized the way they process situations and the meanings that they give to circumstances is different than what I do. A lot of times when things will happen, I associate it with not positive things or outcomes. But I saw that these successful people, they look at, at that as an opportunity to do better or excel or make something better from what just happened, where in my opinion, I was like, holy shit, that happened. Ooh, how are we going to cover that? But their reaction was different. So I had to like, you know, kind of catch myself saying, huh, I'm panicking. This guy is not panicking. So what's going on? And I see him, I'm like, he's more successful than me. He's older than me. He's more wiser than me. I respect his decision. I trust his decision. So I better just shut my mind and let's see how he does it so I can learn from that. So that was a little bit of a, that was the key point, the, the key turning point for me. No, that is an amazing lesson to get that too, because most people don't realize that's actually the main habit you want. All the patterns, all the morning routines, the PM routines, all of the quote unquote habits you're doing are really the patterns. The habit is to always see the opportunity from whatever's happening, whether it's a win, whether it's a challenge to say, okay, how can I pivot and adjust? What's the lesson here? And still seeing the expansive in front of you or the expanse in front of you for all of the, the possibility and opportunity to still create what you desire. Love it. How do people find you? All right. People can find me at, on Instagram at Stacy.Rasky, which is S-T-A-C-Y-R-A-S-K-E, StacyRasky.com. And pretty much that's the hub. So that's the best place to do it, either here on Instagram or on StacyRasky.com. Give us the short version of your book. Like, give us the title of the book, so at least if anybody oh, wants to. Yes, absolutely. It. Yes, uh, it is on Amazon. It was an Amazon bestseller. It is called "Be a Boss and Fire That Bitch." Qu <laughs> well, you said it. I didn't say it. <laughs> yes, quiet the inner critic and finally believe you're good enough. And that's what it is. It's all a mindset book. It's all about, and it's the practical tools and strategies and skills to build, to maintain, and well, to create and maintain that positive success mindset and really transform your relationship with your inner critic. Because again, you, like you said, right? We have the doubt and the, oh my God, what's happening? Like, oh, that was a shit day. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but yeah, you can either go to firethatbitchbook.com or just search my name, Stacey Rasky, on Amazon or search the book title. Because, yeah, be a boss and fire that bitch. Can't really miss that one. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good title. That's a very catchy title. Thank um, you. So here's my question. Um, what is your personal best? What's your favorite self-help book? What do you <gasps> Oh my gosh, right? Like, put me on the spot for that one. Um, you know, it is so funny. There's so many. My you must have talked to. Yeah, I was going to say, my top two favorites right now, let's see. Of course, Think and Grow Rich, because it's all mindset. Of course, all mindset. And lately, it has been, um, oh, goodness, right? Because you put me on the spot. Uh, well, we'll just go with Brene Brown, because those have really been good. It's, it's been a lot of this, this, the vulnerability and the owning of the shame have been huge for me in taking my power back taking it away from my past and allowing me to show up in this place of empowerment and moving forward and creating what I desire and helping others in the process. Love it. Listen, thank you so much for taking this time and being with us today. Hopefully we'll be able to do more. I, I have a little bit of research to do on my own because some of the vocabulary we use today, I, I'm, I'm a big guy on, on vocabulary. I like to understand it because if I don't understand the vocabulary, then I'm not able to use it in proper places. So I want to make sure that I know what that means in one co in what context I can use it or in one, what context is really not appropriate. So I'm definitely going to do some research. Um, thank you so much for being today. Hopefully we'll be able to, to stay in touch and do more videos. Yeah, absolutely. You are very welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It was such a pleasure. You got to talk to you soon. Stay safe. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.